Make it work. Did that resonate? Well, oh, we didn't get the rug. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll be you want fine. me to put something on the floor? No, we'll just figure out what we need to do after how this one is. It's right. not echoey to a point where it's going to kill anybody. All right, so if you don't like the sound, it's because this is the podcast room, but this is our podcast in the that's, podcast that's room. That's right. In. We, actually, we, go. we've been, we were faking the studio thing before at the office. But now we have a studio. Yeah. yeah. We're going to call this the studio. This is, it technically is its own building. If you will. Actually, it's, so uh, we, I, we just moved to Amsterdam. I just moved to Amsterdam and then um, have a house. Like 1920 Paris, like the owner was a pimp. No, sorry, he was a famous actor. He actually looks like a pimp. Oh, he looks like a pimp. Yeah. Like, oh, like when I saw him, I was like, we're in Amsterdam. I was like, I know what you were doing for a living. <laughs> Seems he was an actor. I was like, yeah, sure. I don't know. Um, and he did the entire house, like 1920 Paris. It's he the, the amount of work yeah that he did so this house guys is like right in amsterdam in the, shit, oh, in the center right in the shit to the point where like there's just the glass windows there's people you people know right, passing right by, on yeah. It. yeah but so he changed all windows of the house and the the studio into the double glass to yeah. isolate everything yeah so you can't hear shit from anywhere in the house the amount of, and then he um you know, like he did, uh, he changed. So this is all new, like all yeah. the floor. But all the floor in every uh, floor is and new as well. And the, the windows and everything in this are legitimately 100 years old. They just yeah. had like the glass repaint. It's fucking yeah. beautiful. But he, yeah. he also bought like all the radiators, like yeah. old school in France with the actual... Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's a nice house. Yeah. It's a sweet spot. <laughs> but the thing is, I think he could never rent it. Real. Oh, yeah, it is you a bit... see the way it's set up? It's a weird setup. I'm the only one who can live yeah. in that. Well, place. there's the other reason. I think I think he prepped... I think he just had you in mind. Like, once you called yeah. him or something or contacted him... Because I go upstairs and there's this set of super old dumbbells. Like, they got to be yeah. 100 You know, the round ones, old. like cast iron? They're really round yeah. and they're all kind of made in one You thing. know, with a long handle. Yeah. And, yeah. and now... The, and there's a set of probably 40 of them up there. 30 of yeah. them up on your thing. And... Old cast iron. So I went upstairs and, and then I, punching bag. I was like, dude, when did you buy these? These are fucking great. He's like, they were here. And I'm like, that motherfucker tricked you. Yeah. It's <laughs> he, just, like, he looked you up on Instagram. I was like, all right. Like, I'm going to sell a house with that yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to sell the house. Rent the house. I wish I could buy it. He'll never sell it. But uh, yeah, he knew that he built a seller for his wine. Oh, yeah. So you guys know. So the dude actually is, is in France because he was like, yeah, I have a castle where I make my wine <laughs> in the south of France. And so we're going back and forth, but that's too much time. So I'm just going to stay in France in my castle making wine. I checked the wine. One of his bottles, uh, one of his stuff was like silver metal. at some oh, sure. stuff. He's legit there too. <laughs> and so he's going to stay in his castle in the south of France. I was like, who are you? What did you do for a living? Because yeah, I'm right? doing things the wrong way. Like, uh, how do I know? And so... So he, has, he built a cellar for his wine, like, oh, this yeah. house is so good. And so in the meantime, what happened? So Julian moved out of his place, which meant, well, I've got to still have a couple months to pay on my lease in Austria. But it's like, well, if I'm not paying to live in this one, then we might as well just be here. So, right, the rent is going so we're way, posted so. up in Megan and Lincoln and I are posted up in Julian's old place. And yep. uh, I mean, it's awesome. Like right in this, it's it's this is way more city than I'm used to. Utrecht yeah. is way more city than I'm used to. So, so you're saying that we can shoot shoot more podcasts? Probably, yeah. There you go. He said <laughs> probably because he, he's still like, let me get set up. No, <laughs> there you go. But we've got, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's been great. The roof deck getting settled in the dock. But I got to tell you guys, my we were riding. Me and Lincoln drove here 12 hours with the dog, and all of our belongings. Fetch is large in a car. Yeah, it was nuts. We get here, we settle in the next day, everything's fine. Next right. morning, me and Lincoln go to ride a bike to go get his bike. We finally got the Holland, let's go get a bicycle. <laughs> he sits on the back of my bike, sideways, like he's done before. We've done it here before. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and he gets on the thing and starts, and we go, and I remember kind of, I think he hit the kickstand one time, and I, and I remember thinking, well, at least this is the last time we got to do this, because... In five minutes, he's going to get his own bike, and I don't fuck with this. And then I hear this <laughs> scream, and the bike locks up, and fucking... He had got his heel, oh. like, with the shoe and all. It didn't cut it, just squeezed with the spokes. And it's kept it in the shoe, and from that squeezing, it basically ripped all the way down to his Achilles heel, or his Achilles tendon, and down and ripped the whole heel off. Mm -hmm. Like, meat and all. It was fucked he up. He sent me the picture. It's not... The only so, thing holding the heel was the shoe. 
The, yeah, really. And and so, but I we're on the street and I don't know what the fuck to do. And yeah. so there's these like, this late, this girl was there going into her place and she was like, what do I need to call a doctor? And I'm like, I think you need to call like an ambulance because I'm not going to. They don't do here. They don't really do here. And so, but she also is just seeing a kid on the ground. I had took the shoe off and looked and went, oh, fuck. And so. But you can't say that though. Exactly. I can't say that to her. Out. So she's going, she's calling and talking to somebody and she's asking me these questions. I'm like, just give me the phone. And this lady's like, is the cut more than three centimeters and less than 10? And I'm like, it's more than both of those. What, what do you, yeah. where do I need to go? What are we doing? And she, more question, more questions, more question. If I'm like, is someone on their way or do you, can I be moving towards you instead of answering these fucking questions? And finally I just gave the lady the phone. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this. And there was a doctor like a block away. So I carry Lincoln over there. Because again, I can't tell all these Send back 20. That's right. So I carry him over to this place and go in there. The doctor comes in. She looks at it and just puts it back and goes, um, well, since it's a fall, we're going to want to probably have him do an x-ray also. So, so we won't do yeah. stitches here because you'll have to do the x-ray. So you're going to have to go somewhere else. Right. So that's this is something Ooh. we've seen in Holland so many times. Yeah. Like, what she's saying is, I don't want to do the work. Yeah. And, and so it's I'm okay. Send you you're a else. fucking coward. You're not qualified. Yes, it scares exactly. you. Or you're busy. But say those things. Or you're being a... Don't, yeah, bitch. don't fucking pass that off on your bureaucracy. God, I flat out said, I was like, if my son wasn't in here and I didn't have better things, I'd rip the walls down of this place with all of you in it. It's like, I'm fucked. And I stormed out and didn't say yeah. thank you to not a one of them. Fuck them. She literally had the ball say, well, since you do live just a few blocks away, you could set up and we could be your general practitioner. I'm like, what? Are you out of your fuck? She literally offered that. At least she tried to sell. I'll give her something. But unbelievable. But we went to the actual emergency room. Those people were fantastic. Lincoln got Right. But the, uh, you just need to find someone who wants to do the wants work. Wants to do the work. We see that with waiters. Like, this is the mm -hmm. one thing in Holland that I've seen is that. It's like people... Just don't want to work. Yeah. Like in that, in that, yeah. uh, when they don't want to work, they just pass you on to the next one, yeah. or they don't know. Yeah, and almost at every level, from banking to yeah. real estate. To I, I went to ask for student stuff for Yaya to take the train, you know, to take some stuff. Say no, we don't have that. And I'm like, but I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then Lincoln. So what? You get to the yeah. Rest, so we get to the. Around. They were they were good. It was what it was. It took time, and it was a major kind of ordeal. You got I'm like sweating. I'm sweating. But it like, was. Uh, we'll take a picture, but so. I, I did not tell him, but I kind of set the radiator really high just to see him sweat during the podcast. He just wants to see me shine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. But so, so, but it was like 17 stitches to basically reattach the heel. And 10 of them were what they Ugh. described as structural, which Ugh. meant they had to like pull into the place. The Achilles is fine though. The Achilles was untouched. And actually they were worried about nicking it and stuff like yeah. that. But as I started looking at the shoe oh, and what happened, it was, it wasn't a cut. If I would, if he would have been hit with like a hatchet, yeah. you would have been. But it really, it just was like getting pinched. It so just it squeezed tore, the skin it right off. Tore the the meat. Away. All the meat off. Yeah. Oh, so just a gnarly. pinch and pull. That fucked so up. Gnarly. But now they put him in a cast just so he doesn't move it at all because any movement will be. And so you know how Tyler felt at the same time. One of the text messages was like, "I did not tell Megan yet." <laughs> we we had been in the hospital for five hours, and I had not told Megan yet. Because what do you do? What, what, you know what I mean? Do All the married I, men out there, you understand time. Yeah, I was like, I don't have a resolution. So, so do yeah, I send yeah, a, do right. I just say we're do in the hospital? Do not send a text to the wife until you have a solution for, yeah. So I waited until it was done. It was stitched up. It was clean. We knew no one was going to die. It was going to stay attached. And it was in a cast. And so I sent her a picture of him in a cast. What happened? Fell off the bike. Got some stitches. I'll tell you more later. And then it was not a thing. Smart man. Yeah. But but that was our our, <laughs> our getting settled in. But, but I want to touch on something that's been interesting. So I wanted to ask you this because I've been in your old place for a little while, yeah. a couple, week or two, week, is you have slept, I, I, we're right. staying in Julian's room. And, and so in Julian's and room, no we, mattress. Left, we left our stuff there's behind no and there's no mattress, room. which I'm not fucking fussy either way. I don't know if you guys know this. I've slept, I think by my calculations, probably like 80 nights out at the office on the couch because it's just, yeah. it's there, it's easy, it's my space, it doesn't bother me. But I've never slept on the floor with like on purpose you know what i mean yeah. i've never and and i've always known that you kind of did but we've never even talked about it so i want to know kind of your thing with sleeping on the floor and he's not sleeping on a thin mattress on the floor right that's what people every time they it like, is so you mean hard the mattress? floor no, i just put in a, a blanket sheet yeah on the floor yeah wherever i'm at yeah so my question is first how did that ever begin i was 
Um, Poor. Seventeen. <laughs> That's yeah, usually be, right. <laughs> I'm sixteen, seventeen, and so uh, <laughs> first, so well. First of all, sleeping has always been an issue. Okay. Always, which is one of the main reasons of the protocol. Is sleeping was has been an issue for as long as I can remember. I think. Yeah, I mean, over 30 years, I don't know, like always, I guess. Yeah. And um, I'm also extremely arched. In how you... Yeah, yeah. like, uh, I guess I would have to show pictures, but see those babies? Your like, rib cages. See, like this, yeah. like for people that have on the videos right now, this is me standing straight, and you can yeah. see how much my uh, ribs stick out. What yeah. happened was my rib cage is inclined almost at, I'm not going to say 45, but a good 30 degree angle. Yeah. Uh, but I have pictures of me as a, I don't know, like a six year old. With, it looked like I have a half a soccer ball mm -hmm. in my back. So I am so arch, my, the ribs that are normally down for me st sticks up mm -hmm. a lot. And so that's why I started swimming. Yeah. Because when I was 10, they were like, look, <coughs> you got to do you got to do something like you or they, they wanted to physiotherapy and instead we went toward swimming. Yeah. So, um, so sleep was always an issue. And then when I was 16, 17, I sp spent uh, one night on the floor because I thought it'd be badass yeah. to sleep on the floor. Like that's, fucking Rambo or something. Exactly. That's really the reason <laughs> it started. And um, at first I could not lay on my back on the floor for more than 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. Because it, like my back could not take it. It was, you know, it was relaxing. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my God, like I, I can't. Like, yeah. like the whole stuff was so fucking tight. It was just opening me up. I could, I could barely take it. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's, if I can't do this, chances are it's probably good for me. So I was like, all right. So I stuck with it. At first it was a bit rough, like your the bones touch and yeah. me on the side was hurting my ribs a lot. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't be on my stomach or stuff like that. But, um, I was like, I'm going to stick to it just to see what happens. And then after a while, um, I go back into a bed and I slept like shit. Yeah. And I was like, nah. And so from there, I just naturally I ended up on the floor. So every time I go somewhere, I take the sheets, I put it. And again, it's not, I don't put a mattress on the floor. I just take sheets and I put it like, so right now in my room, I put sheets on the hardwood floor. Literally, just so you don't get like floor dust and dirt on you for the most part. Yeah, it's mostly so it doesn't. Uh, I've slept yeah. like that, just put a blanket on and I'm yeah. fine. But uh, yeah, I put some a sheet sort of for area, some yeah. kind of hygiene yeah. or stuff yeah. like that. I mean. um, By the way, splinters in my dick does not sound good either. So uh, <laughs> a sheet will be nicer. Yeah. yeah, I mean, let's be safe, right? <laughs> Safety <laughs> first. Yeah. Um, but so for me, it was so. It's been so, it's been over thirty years. Yeah. It's been 30 years now, yeah. It's been 30 years since I slept on the floor. I can tell you something, I cannot sleep on the bed. Uh, eventually, wrecks, between three, four nights, it starts to wreck my back again, because mm -hmm. it's moving funny. And, but I don't sleep well. Like, I can't sleep deeply if I'm not on the floor. So, I had, I, I had never even looked into this, like read about it or anything, none, not yeah. at all. But when, when, when you said, you're like, well, you, when you get here, you probably have to get a mattress then. And I was like, yeah, well, if we would need to get one whenever we go anywhere, somewhere anyways. So I get there and the first few nights I slept just on the floor. I would spend one night on the couch with Lincoln and the dog. But, uh, uh, so we lay. The couch is on that bed. But <laughs> no, yeah. but so we, um, a, 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 anyway, so I lay up there in the first few nights, like three, four nights. I, and still when I lay down, I hate it. When I get ready to go to bed first, and I yeah. lay down on the floor and not for any reason yeah. other than I get there and I just, I feel like I'm not comfortable. It's inconvenient getting down all the this skin stuff. has to get used yeah. to it. And yeah. Except for when I fell asleep, which I seemed to fall asleep really fast. There wasn't a yeah. lot of fucking around in bed. Like when I was yeah. down there, I was done. I was out and I slept like a total sack of shit, just a rock until fucking mm -hmm. morning. Yeah. And, and then when I woke up, I, first off, it's the it's it is legitimately the most awake that I've felt waking up in a long time, probably amidst a really stressful week. Yes, generally of speaking, moving and that I'm waking up feeling and rested and yeah. energetic and everything after flying and driving a car back and driving a car back. Yeah. Twelve hours yeah. each way and all the right. shit and unpacking, moving the dog. Yeah. yeah, twelve hours in a car like I look like Mister Incredible in that thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, by the way, you uh, you I, I figure it out. You pull on that lever. That lever does not recline nope. the seat. It puts the seat up. So you've been pulling on the lever, driving your How do you go in. down? Okay, I just thought it didn't go down. Yeah. No, no. Fuck so you have me. to push down to put the seat down. Oh, okay. And then from there, there's, there's a Then thing. there's the wheel. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So when I was when I was pulling up and it wasn't doing anything, I was already you maxed were... out as high as I could be then. Yeah. Well that's a so normally you max yourself out into the ceiling so of the normal, car. So normal normally with it's these, a tiny car. Yeah, yeah. Normally with these cars, I will I mean I basically can see if you're sitting upright, take pretty much line a straight line forward from your eyeballs, and that's where the windshield is on me on most cars. So it's fun. I can see the road. But the problem is is when I need to see a stoplight and here in Europe or at least in the Netherlands, yeah. most of the stoplights are not across the street. Yeah. They're, on they're the right same. next yep. to you. That's always a problem. So I'm like, like this the whole time. But anyway, uh, I wake up and I feel like I've gotten into some sort of physical altercation with the floor. Like just the, the soft tissue, yeah. But not in an injured way. Not in like yeah. not even in like a trained yeah. way. Like I, I, a vaguely I remember uh, that being yeah. so way back then. And the way yeah, I would so describe long. it most accurately would be if you've ever been like kind of all out of whack. If you go either get like a really deep tissue massage yeah. or go to like a chiropractor and you get all your shit squared away. Like there's that feeling where I'm moving about. I'm like, I'm sore, but I feel like things are right with the world. Right. You know? So yeah, because for eight hours, your body is not moving. Yeah. So maybe it has the time to set. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, if you look at, just from a prediction observation model, I'm curious to know if being in a bed that is so soft and therefore moves, every time you move, the whole thing mm -hmm. moves. You know what I mean? Like, well, if it doesn't keep you awake guessing. in that sense? Well, yeah, this was guessing, interesting. Yeah. So I had talked to, one, I had looked up a bunch of articles about sleeping on the floor then mm -hmm. after the first few days because I was kind of scared because I was like, I think I, I hate it and I, and I think I need to keep doing it and I don't know if I want to make that commitment. You know what I mean? Like, It sucks, but I think it's better for me. So I, it's like, I fuck. Believe so so <laughs> I started reading about it for a couple of days, and I came across uh, DJ Murakami from mm -hmm. the uh, mentoring, mentoring program. program. He is Strong Camps on Instagram, yep. I believe, and yes, online yes. movement mm -hmm. or movement university. Um, but anyway, he had a blog post that he wrote like years ago, three years ago, about sleeping on the floor for six months, kind of a walkthrough. And it kind of paralleled my thinking. And then it turns out at the end, He did another recap because he's done it for three and a half years since then, so mm -hmm. constantly. So it started as a six-month experiment. He did it the whole way, and it was uh, kind of interesting to read. And so I, I just happened, I was on a call with him yesterday, and I'm talking to him about it. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said the same thing that you said about the bed. He's like, the one thing is, you get down to the floor, you know what you're getting. You lay down, you know, you know what's the there. Yep. You, lay down your bed, you know what's there. Like there is no, there's no from a movement standpoint. Yeah, like you get, you get what you get. Yeah. And and what's what's interesting that I found is I when I lay on my back, instead of my hips and whatever ass I have, kind of just digging in and maintaining that lumbar. Right. It pulls on me. It kind of turns, but makes me. I don't know, well, it just pulls straight. out my lower back. It's straight. Yeah, that that's, and that if was you're, killing me at the first And time. if you're crooked, if you kind of sink a hip, it can be that way in a bed for the whole time. Yeah. Because your ass will dig into the like thing shoes. and you'll stay. Yeah. And it was, I don't know, it's, it's, it's been really, really But interesting. But also, I'm curious, like, for example, in a bed, there are parts of your body that should not be touching. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm super arched on my lower back, never touches anything. Yeah. Like, that, by the way, on that, there's a lot of people sometimes on my videos that go, well, how come you're arching your back? I'm not. <clears throat> This is a um, It build. Is. <laughs> I have a big ass and I'm extremely arched naturally. Yeah. So that means that my lower back never touches anything. So on the wheel, they were like, well, you're using your hips. You know, you, yeah. I'm like, I, I, you can't tell. Not me. <laughs> like, just the way I'm built, you, you'll, you'll always think I'm arching. Yeah. Uh, but so my lower back never touches anything. But yeah. in a bed, it does. Yeah. You know what I mean, so there's something pushing on my back in a way that never does otherwise. Yeah. There's a bunch. Of, so when you're on the side like that, when it's very hard and you're on the side, it almost relaxes your hip because the whole well, thing just sinks. That's the thing yeah. too that I was going to say is what happens now is I'll sleep on my back or lay on my back even until I can't fucking take it anymore. It's like I'm just like, Ooh. and then that's I go and no, but then I go lay on my side and it's like. Oh my God, this is the most comfortable thing. Like it's exactly yeah. where I need to be until I can't take that anymore. Because and then I go to, yeah, then I go to the other side issue. and it yeah. feels great. And by then I'm talking that rotation in five, 10 minutes, yeah. I'll wake up then boom. And then it's morning yeah. the next day. Like what the fuck just happened? I, um, I think it's a bit like the shoes. I think it's, you know, I think it's the head ordering the body, yeah. the bed, the shoes. Why do people go in beds? Oh, it's softer. First of all, Yes and no, because after 30 years, 
it's as soft as a bed. Yeah. Like to the skin, to my joints, it yeah. makes no difference. I can be on my ribs on the side, it makes no difference. A bed doesn't feel soft. It yeah. just feels um, giving. Yeah. You know, yeah. like uh, not, not soft in the sense soft, soft to soft the skin. In it. yeah. It's um, it actually you say is... mou in French, which is, you know, like a, like a rubber, like a, like a warm rubber that just deforms yeah. as you go. And I mean, that kind of, more that kind of soft. And uh, so your head Wednesday is going like, oh, I feel good. Do you? I think it's the head, like just like the shoes, it's like, yeah, but then I feel better in the shoes. I'm like, right, even though you're fucking up, your, entire, your body hates you from wearing shoes. But it does feel better mentally. It's not dirty. I'm not going to step on nails. I'm yeah. like, that's true, but there are other can, ways can, to not do cover that. those bases. Right. Yeah. You know, different, I mean, I think yeah. it's a lot of the, that stuff is the head ordering the body. Yeah. I want to touch on that today. So. Yeah, and and what I found is is if people try it is for these first few days, my my hips, I kind of have bony hips on the side. Right. Those. That's the skin. Yeah. It just is. I feel like a bruise it's a bit there. Sore. Yeah. And then I and then after we had done just a session of really just sled work for the most part, sleds and ropes, and the next day I'm like, why are my side delts really sore? And right. I was like, I'm oh, laying on, laying on my yeah. side. But but sorry. <laughs> so but, but but in the end, I mean, I, the way that I felt waking up for the last six seven days has been crazy. I can tell you the other way. I can tell you how I wake up if I sleep in a bed. Yeah, I had well, no, I can't talk about that. But um, I, I had to spend like a few hours in a bed, and then I woke up at one in the morning, going like, I can't fucking do this. Yeah, because uh, I live on the top. Uh, we are, bedroom is on the top floor. Yeah, I went down. Came here actually in this room to get the yoga mat so I could go back up yeah. and put him on the floor because I didn't have a sheet. So I could sleep and, on the floor. And, yeah, yeah. Now that I can just put the sheet on the ground and like, yeah, the, the, the quality of sleep, at least for, I'll talk about what I know, which is for me, uh, is not even close. Yeah. And by the way, when I traveled a lot, right, when, I, we're, we're, when we were on the road, and the one thing with that is the bed is always the same. Yeah. No matter where I was, the bed was the same. Yeah, that's true. And I, you know, for the last probably 10 years, I've bought on purpose the most firm mattress I can find. And that's actually because I'm cheap. Because what happens is if a big guy like me buys a medium soft mattress, you have a hole in the yeah. mattress, a big Tyler size hole yeah. in six months. Yeah. So you get the firmest mattress you can get before you start sleeping in a bowl. It, mm -hmm. just, it just delays it a little bit longer. But it breaks you. Yeah. And I will say this. I know also that it's probably way more healthy for you to from a movement standpoint, to be able to get down to the floor. Like, you shouldn't be such a bitch oh, where going down to yes. the floor kills you, but it fucking kills me. Oh, you get oh. used to that, too. I, I, I went and got, I almost went down to lay down in bed, and Megan goes, don't get comfortable. I'm like, oh, the fucking light. You know, and it's like, right. if I would have laid down, it would have been a tragedy. It's one of those things where you go, okay, I can get over that one. I would have said, honey, I can't It makes do you that. do lunges in the morning. <laughs> yes. To get, yeah. yeah. But the truth is, is, you know, I don't fuck around in reason. I don't fuck around in bed like before sleep, really. Well, Speaking about not that, that. There but. is a downside. <laughs> there is that downside. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be willing to guess. You're just gonna have to fuck somewhere else. Yeah, because <laughs> like your, your knees will hate you. Like yeah. that is the one downside. Yeah, your joints aren't really meant for that. So like your knees will not like the position. Yeah. Like there's no question about that. Like, but at the same time, it's a. It's a mind thing, right? You yeah. know, which one matters more? The sensation <laughs> or my knees? Like, which sensation do I really want? So, yeah, there's always exactly. that. Huh? Exactly. But it's... Um, beds are it's, nicer for... Beds are nicer for... And the bounce. Less effort. The trampoline. No, that's not an effort. Maybe that wasn't the yeah, sound yeah, I needed either. Yeah. <laughs> but plus, less effort is not the point. Come on. But, the, yeah, I will... But maybe that's why beds were so... Popular. At the beginning, yeah. right? Because you can't yeah. have sex, a sex on yeah. the floor socks. That's like a sex trampoline, man. <laughs> right. No, plus it's, it is soft on the knees, right? Yeah. 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 So unless we we should sell like special knee stuff. For... Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Neoprene. Oh, I like it. This is what we're going to do. Uh, Reband. <laughs> Reband. So the month of April is going to be sleep on the floor. Yep. And at Strong Fit, we will have a special promotion. We were going to sell... Knee sleeves and <laughs> knee open knee sleeves for all your needs. For all your needs. Knee and elbow sleeves. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the new promotion yeah, of Strong yeah. Fit. Hey, we have Strong Fit and Bitches coming up. Yep, somewhere. Did I tell you that that, that um, podcast would be popular? Yep. Now they're asking for more. So I have to, finish, to I have to finish the 
Julian's story. So we'll do that at some point yeah. this week or next week. I have to finish <laughs> the story. I'm telling you, I knew it was going to be popular. Do you know that it's episode 69? Yeah, someone had mentioned that too. I was, I was like, yeah, and, I, was and I was like, I actually didn't plan that, but, but that's, yeah. there are no coincidences. Exactly. <laughs> but so what I'm saying is April is sleep on the floor months. Yeah, and, and I, I can we, tell you I wanted the least to do with it. I was thinking I would do this for two days and go fucking get a map. Yep. And and and, the, and I highly recommend. And the promotion coupon for the month of April for all our neoprene knee sleeves will be uh, strong fit and bitches. Strong fit and bitches. This is the knee sleeves we don't sell. But we'll sell them oh, by wow. April. That's why I say <laughs> okay. April, so we have time okay. to. I will order on these sleeves just so I can, we can sell them. <laughs> but uh, don't say I don't take care of you. That's right. So one month, uh, yep. sleep on the floor. And also, here's the thing that I don't do. Keep the bed. For, uh, keep the bed. But yeah. don't do, because you only have a You know what I do with the bed now? It's, a, it's my couch. Yeah, you get to sit on it and put your shoes yeah, on. Yeah, no, but like if I want to read, I just yes. lay on the bed. Because yeah. you never want to read in a place where you sleep. Because yeah. you want to disengage. So when I'm on the bed, I'm on the couch. Yeah. I, iPad or I want to yeah. chill. I do that on the, on, the, on the bed. Like I'm on the couch. But the, I sleep on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I noticed in reading a lot of these people's stuff where they would they would transition over to a to sleeping on the floor, they did it over the course of so long and it was such a fucking pussy way to do it. Just sleep because, on the fucking floor. Just sleep on the floor. Because I was reading things where people took like like six weeks to go from a mattress with a pad oh, to just off. the mattress. Yeah, and then they took the off. box break. And then they gradually lowered the oh, height. And then off. And so just go on the floor. I had to do it. I drove 12 hours straight with Lincoln and the dog yeah. and then got home and then I fucking no, laid on the floor. No, but this is part of the whole, like, you know, and I woke up weeks to great. get ready. Yeah. At some point, come on, man. Yeah. Just sleep on the fucking floor. Yeah. Uh, so from, from April 1st to May 1st. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's, I, I can't sleep on a bed. Yeah. And the fact that you've done it for that long, that's why I, I had to ask you about it because I was like, well, we need to talk about it. But the problem yeah. is, I don't even know if you can help me because you've done it for so goddamn long. I don't, so normal, I don't really remember. I don't remember the first week, for example. Like, I remember the back thing very well. Yeah. I could not lay on my back. Yeah. Like, within 10, 20 minutes, I would just almost like a spasm feeling. Like, I just could not take it. That's because I'm so fucking arch. But he also tell me, like, for example, if I sleep on a bed three days in a row, uh, I tried. That's why I was yeah. like, I'm curious, right? First, sleep like shit. But I was like, oh, let's see what. Three days, my back is ruined. Because we were in a hotel room in Paris. I was, I could not sleep on the floor. It was the, the bedroom was that not small and the bed that big. I, by day, the third night, I hated my life. Yeah. Like my, I could ne did not sleep at all. Because then suddenly my back started spasming on the right again. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. I think the, what I had figured out by about the second day was I was laying there wanting to complain about it at first and then i realized i was like well the floor here there's really nothing wrong with this floor <laughs> you know what i'm saying like like if a human being cannot if i cannot just lay on a floor right. with a blank like but that's without causing like like massive discomfort but i think this is why people that's what I knew were, I knew, yeah i knew then that there was something wrong with me right and not the floor. and i think and i need to spend will, some time with that to that's figure that exactly out. what people will figure out is like how come I cannot lay on something hard for an hour. Yeah. You will see what I mean. Like, yeah. it's, it's very surprising. But like, not laying like while reading, because you, you can kind of ignore it, mm -hmm. is trying to relax enough to sleep while being on a hard surface. It should not be an issue. Yeah. And for most, it will be. But I do believe like you sleep like a log. My, I, my sleep quality has been, I thought, pretty good for a while, really for quite yep. a while. And then all of a sudden, it's like I got... This is not, it's the fucking problem. So I was like, I think I have to keep doing this for this reason. And I was fucking so mad about it because I just wanted yeah. a big soft bed. <coughs> Sleep is the number one thing. Yeah. It's always been the constraint, right? Yeah. I just never, uh, I did it, me, I did it for my back. Yeah. But being so harsh, I was like, hey. so I never really considered putting people through it. Yeah. But then you telling me about the stuff, I was like, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. But it's been 30 years, so for me, it's like, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, it's like learning how to tie your shoes. Like, I don't yeah, know. well, I it seems to work. Shoes. Yeah, it's well, not a big, profound thing. Uh, yeah. Not anymore, yeah. I mean, but yeah. So, but that was kind of our, I don't know, our, our, our transition. Richard and Daya got their spots set up here, too. Right, so Richard and Daya are uh, four minutes by bicycle, yeah. I swear, like yeah. uh, fi less than 15 minutes walking. Yeah. She blocks away. You, if you, the apartment you're looking I at. I got two is, that I'm looking at that are like right over there. eight minutes walking from yeah. here and everything. So yeah. then we have the whole family yeah. in one stuff. We have the studio <laughs> and we're going to start to do some content. Yeah, lots. 
lots. We've got, yeah, a lot of shit coming down the pipe. So yeah. where do we want to start? You want to start template? Yeah, yeah let, let me do it. Okay, let, let's start template because I'm, uh, I'm going to release a new template, uh, most likely April 1st with the bed. Uh, it is not about how to use the, the neoprene <laughs> this leaves. It is, although we might do a podcast uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that would be fun. But anyway, I, there's a few lessons I couldn't impart. There's a few, those, there's a few of those maybe we're just going to, maybe there will be a paywall for something. <laughs> <laughs> for that one, I was like, if you need, oh, anyway, because my mom's not gonna pay twenty bucks for me to say that to hear me say those stories, so I know that she won't hear them. There I, you go. That way, your mom will We don't pay well. No, no, no. But <laughs> when I finish my story, you will see the kind of advice I can give. Anyway, um, so yeah, so we stopped the templates six months ago. <laughs> maybe about. even yeah, six nine months ago maybe. maybe. So and then I'm releasing a new one April first. So why did I stop the templates? because they were not they were the wrong constraints yeah. um the the reason i did the template at first is because i was working with cj and invictus and then he needed a template for his games athletes and we're like we can do that and then sell it for people i followed the same kind of training mm -hmm. i was like yeah that's great so the idea of that was to do uh, an assistance work type template two days a week this is what you could add to your training in order to not fuck up your shoulders as bad, your lower back and everything. So that was following the um, Barbell Shred yes. uh, podcast yeah. video that most people know me from. Um, and so I was like, all right, let me give you an assistance work template two days a week, right? And so I did that. That was in conjunction with CJ for his athletes. I was like, okay. And then so that started to, to sell very well on Invictus. And then we created our own same idea that that sold very well as well. So I was like, all right. Um, but... I did not like it because that's not what I was doing. And don't get me wrong, I was doing that work that I was giving people to do, but they were doing another work on the side that, that I was doing. So I was like, I felt disconnected from that and I felt I was not giving me. my. I think also, do you think that that's why with, because there was just demand or people would ask to kind of fill yeah, in, well, you know, like, well, it's like, oh, well, I don't do this. Can I get one that's just for, right. uh, well, in, in which case too, then you had one that was set up kind of for grappling because you were doing your grappling and jujitsu right. and then you had your, back, your training. And, yep. and so then that's what you did. And then, but then that stayed and then you go, we need a CrossFit one. And then we needed a uh, right, one for CrossFit and strength. And we ended up making a lot of, I don't want to say compromises, but yeah. there was just a lot of criteria no, was, that we had was, to cover. Those were compromises. Yeah. It was, and that's why I didn't like it. Yeah. The, the, you know, the only thing we did is we turned it into an objective. Yeah. And then it becomes about money. Yeah. Well, what a, and I don't do stuff for money. And what? And that's what. And the objective at that point, I don't even know the just, objective was money. money. It was meeting demand. It was right, just. It was just that like thing. people it's the want same it. Thing. What can no, we no, get? but let's call let's call a cat a cat. Yeah. That's what this is. It's yeah. about making money because I don't meet the people that that are buying it. I don't know what they are doing. My hope at first was to allow people to not fuck up their shoulders so to put that mm -hmm. stuff because I, I felt there was a need for it but you see from people's reaction we we created as many problems as we fixed yeah yeah so and i think my goal is to help this is what i what i want to do is, is to help and i think the best way i can help is by being me so you know, you know yeah. I mean? like not trying to become somebody else not yeah. like i don't like when people like well i run a business i'm like what the fuck does that mean like yeah. Does that, well, I'm going to sell you a process that I don't understand, that I, admit, I understand it, but that I don't do. I, I don't like all this. So I was like, all right, so I need better constraints. So how did I set up the new constraints for the, for the template? Why is it different? Well, first of all, it's the stuff that I do, right? But more importantly, uh, that, that template represents the difference between functional specialization, functional segregation, and functional integration. So um, <laughs> this is an extremely important uh, concept that, of course, Carl Friston talked about mm -hmm. in one of the video, video I posted on the Strong Fit community. That is one of, which I think explain exactly what the problems are in the fitness and even in the medical world, right? So what is functional uh, specialization, <coughs> functional segregation? It's a term they use in neuroscience where um, in the last like 30 years, we had the brain imaging yep. where, we, where we can start mapping stuff, right? And uh, Carl Friesen explained this better than me. So if you want to see, go see the video, what he's, what he's explaining, like we start to see certain things like a part of the visual center is in the back of the brain where you see the left, right versus the, the, the right, right? One leads up and then the other one leads up and all that stuff. So they started uh, mapping 
the, the brain like this based on what gets lit up depending on what action. But that's basically what is called functional uh, specialization, where you see one part of the brain for that action. And uh, a criticism of that is that this is basically phrenology. It's not that far off. Phrenology was that science of the 19th century where people were feeling the bumps on the head mm -hmm. and seeing that based on the bumps, they could tell you your personality traits or yeah. stuff like that. So bullshit, yeah. right? Um, and that's, so that's functional segregation, same idea, where you take one area of the brain does this. And we know that's not true. There is no such thing as one area of the brain does that. What the brain works, as we say in the last podcast, is it works in networks, mm -hmm. right? So it's this part with this part and that part, they do this, but this part, this part, and that part do something Different else, function. right? Different so, function for each pairing or grouping. Right, so the key, right, exactly. So the key to understand that was to go into functional integration. It's not enough to know that this leads up when that. It's in that context, when this happens, that brain, and then you get that network. Like, for example, we saw when it comes mm -hmm. to visual stuff that if you do a test of visual things with the brain, you, you have to distinguish between someone just looking like this at the wall and someone actively looking at something. Yeah. It, it's actually different. But I think that concept of functional integration is something like Richard and I were talking about maybe just a couple weeks ago where he said, he said like, context is like context functional integration is really is context. context. It's, it's like he looked at this thing and then the brain did this. It's like... Like you said, you look extra hard, it's a different thing. The context is what matters. Is everything. And, and that is really the difference between going through just correlation, which is what the other ones were. Kind right. of. So, no, no, but that's yeah. functional segregation is all about correlation. Yeah. Oh, this leads up, this leads up, that. I mean, like, but you don't know shit about yeah. what happened. You just know correlation. Or what to do with it. That by the way, then you get the chicken and the egg. Who yeah. influenced, so who started it? I mean, yeah. who influenced what and to what degree? Right, are those things, but those things are everything. And this is where you see the problem in the fitness world with, for example, let me give you an example of knees out. Mm -hmm. Why knees out? Because we don't want the knees in. I'm like, yeah, but there's segregation for you. It's like you don't want the knees in, so the easiest way is to do knees out. But you're lacking the context of why yeah. are the knees coming in. Just but put, that's the question no one answers. Yeah. Right. And so they tell you, it's like, well, it's because they lack the glute meat to drive the knees out. I'm like, no, you're saying the same thing. You're going at an objective base, objective base going like, my knees cannot have to st stay out. So therefore, if I do glute me, then I drive the knees out. And, but then before you know it, it now they all squat with their knees out, which of course and has never worked. And it's all it only works made. for people that squat 100 yeah. kilos, if you noticed. I'm yeah. sorry, guys, but that's a fact. Mm -hmm. And it's all glute mid, and they're wrecking their back. Hips and they're back. all in a knees, of course, because yeah. now their knees are outside of their ankle. And we have that, those, that weird CrossFit squad that we see so often that is just wrecking people. And they can't, they've been stuck at the same 100, 140 kilo squat yeah. for fucking five years. Right? So that way, it can be. It was functional segregation. Yeah. Right? Because what was the problem? They did not understand the torque chains. Mm -hmm. And the torque chain is what? Tension over position is functional integration. This is where I realized where I lost people in the conversation, where they were going at anatomical chart and I was going at integration. For example, easiest way to explain. Um, it is getting warm in the room, by the way. Oh, you're not the only one. Okay. It's, it's getting a bit warm. I won't lie. I, I, do like, I was doing that to punk him, but I'm kind of paying the price too. I, I, did, I overall did that one a bit. Um, so the peg stick. Yes. So for the people I don't see a video, it's that thing from the 80s that has the, the spring yeah. uh, and then the two handles on the side. Right. So you take one and you're going to bend the peg stick into a rainbow shape. Yeah. Right. When you do that, do you engage the pegs? Yes. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Like go get a 60 kilo one and you'll see engage the pegs. Right. So now there's a problem with that. If you look at ano ano anatomically speaking, the peg major, right, is the internal rotator of the humerus, mm -hmm. right? But if I grab a peg stick and I bend it, I have adduction of the arms, but I have external rotation of the humerus. So I'm getting internal torque with an external rotation of the humerus, yeah. right? So that means that anatomically speaking, what I'm saying is not true, mm -hmm. even though with a peg stick, I can. So I bet, by, by the way, that is an, is an argument I made with physios like at almost at every seminar, because every time they go, they tell me two things. Peck is an internal rotator of the humerus, so is the latissimus dorsi. So how could I have external torque for the latissimus dorsi if it's an internal rotator of the humerus? And how can I have external rotation of the humerus if 
I'm using the pegs to bend a peg stick. And yet, in both cases, it's... A, and it's we, we've talked about this in the past, about how people so often try to sum up, or, or they think of their body as the sum of all of its parts. And it just isn't that. It's, it, it, it's that's not, functional it's not, segregation. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It, it's not this does, it's just you can't. No, and because so, you so we always context. have to look at it. Exactly. So we always have yeah. to zoom back. And, uh, it's hot. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my turn to be tough yeah there you go <laughs> I'm making the pussy on that one um, yeah the, so this is the issue right is the difference between uh, if you just talk in functional segregation you become a phrenologist yeah that's what you are and by the way that works for nutrition carbs like you know everybody's about glucose glucose is everything I'm like no glucose that is being turned into lactate is the fuel but you can't just say glucose I mean again yeah. it's, so this is fundamentally the problem I find that often with nutrition too, that nowadays I just almost try to not talk about those things anymore, those mechanisms anymore. It, it, I yeah. won't even get into a specific, oh, yeah. I'm, it is, I simply will, will stay on those overarching, uh, you know what I mean? Your daily Ideas, fluctuations, yeah. your circuit, because, like well, rhythms. because the truth is this, is that you have the time, the experience under your belt with, with the intense amount of research. I believe you can defend pretty much any of it to anybody. Yeah. My issue is, I don't, I don't learn it to have to defend it to everybody. No, so you learn it to help. I learn it to help, and that's it. Yeah. So I'm not going to play that fucking game. Yeah. So if you want to, if someone wants to try to beat me up over something, we'll just fucking, I'll just ignore you, yeah. and I'll go on to the next person. Yeah, I don't we'll, just, we'll just kick you off yeah. Instagram and then be yeah. on with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but, but it's fundamentally, I think, yeah, but f for me it's important because fundamentally I think this is a source of problems mm -hmm. that we have. Physio, um, nutrition, uh, training, Stuff like that when we see people, well, well, I have a six pack, like nutrition gave me a six pack. I'm like, right. And how many women lost their periods over uh, doing that stuff? Like your training goes to shit. Like I'm like, how is your nutrition giving you a six pack? And let's say you got 10 kilos on your snatch. Yeah, but your shoulders are hurting. You're starting to hate everyone. You can't sleep at night. How long do you think you're going to maintain that? And no matter what, within the context, th there is no context in that conservation. You getting a six pack is not the context of the conversation. We are having no. Like, if you want to get um, something that gives you a six pack, and you want to do it at a shortest amount of time, first of all, I think meth would work better. Meth, do a, do a good, good water cut. <laughs> right. Di uh, yeah. Diuretics, <laughs> diuretics, meth, all that stuff. I think would work a lot faster. Yeah. Anyway, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that that will sell you that program. Most of and but but you know what I mean like, it's like that, that, it is. It's like it's like racing to the conclusion. We're just going to go right. Right, that. but that's phrenology. Like, yeah. for example, I see that, like, there's a lot of uh, Facebook sends me stuff where they're selling the, um, the programs of the stars that did Avengers or whatever mm -hmm. that got a six pack. I'm like, are we going to talk about the massive amount of steroids that yeah. go into this? I, I want it's whatever, a lot easier. Uh, I want Hugh Jackman's program beginning to end. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but whatever the fuck. Yeah. Right. But it's a lot easier to get lean when you're on steroids. Mm -hmm. Like, people don't seem to understand that fact. Yeah. Steroids are not just to get big. Yeah. They make you a lot leaner. Makes much, I would be a lot and, leaner right now if I wanted to, even on TRT. Yeah, well, and, and that's the other thing. Because of the lack of fluctuations, even at even at a yes. TRT level, what's happened is you're not getting those those natural fluctuations. I fluctuate all the time. And and because of that, then you're consistent. So during that natural fluctuation, yeah. somebody's gonna you know, someone who's fully natural, yeah. they're going to inherently shift the bias to a little bit more fat storage a little bit less muscle yeah. building it's just going to be that yeah, way. during the day i hold water yeah. like to well i'm like you know sometimes yeah. a day i'm just trying to take the pictures yeah. at the right time because i know two hours later like it's not the yeah. same it's, but even if your testosterone's not uh superhumanly high if it's just here and steady yeah. the whole time there is still benefit to that and that's where things oh, yeah. like fasting keep you can help yeah. you stay leaner for that so there's a lot of benefits that, that are very different so, exactly it's, but it's just like about this, stabilizing I, I who was i someone was telling me that uh i had a client come in and she wanted to start joining the gym she wanted to train twice a day right away because the lady who was in the right. wonder woman movie trained twice a day right and i said but Context. I, I, that's a word, I don't even know how to explain that. Yeah, context. and and that's the thing that's very hard for me is that when that when a person is so far off of the context like yeah. that, I'm 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 kind of out. But this is <laughs> what this is what they sell now. Yeah. So I feel for people in that sense because people are breaking down and again that's subjective base right are breaking down your goals into those tiny little yeah. things. So that's talk about segregation right? Yeah. They are segregating completely your goals from reality are going like okay you want this so we're gonna and then objective-based mentality is one step closer is good 
So we're going to work backwards from your goal to where we are now and establish every step with one major problem. You don't know how to get there. No. That's why you're asking. So no one knows how to get there because black swan events, because all that stuff. We don't know how to get there. So how can I work backwards from an unknown place? Yeah. Unless I'm Captain Jack Sparrow and I have that fucking compass, mm -hmm. right? I don't know how to get there, right? So, and so this is where functional integration. So going back. So to when the we talk about with the template, so with right. that functional integration, so I'm to play devil's advocate. How is this any different than? Uh, are you just Hugh Jackman right. in this fucking thing, Julian? Like, right. what are we doing? So, here? well, let's talk about goals for a second, okay. right? Because um, that's something I wanted to talk about. Uh, on seminars, we get the chance to talk to a lot of coaches online and everything as well. And what I've basically seen is like more than 80%, up to 90 to, uh, 90 to uh, 80 to 90% of coaches don't train anymore. Mm -hmm. They do just enough to look the part, but that's it. Yeah. They're either too broken or too burnt out to actually train. It's probably actually the most common, it, it, whatever else causes that, that's the one of the most uh, common things I find amongst CrossFit coaches is that yep. states, they only do, I just do weightlifting now, or I eh, just right. do just But enough. even that, not, yeah. not even that hard. My knees, my shoulder, yeah. burnt out. We have that for powerlifting coaches. We have that for strongman coaches. Most coaches don't train anymore. Yeah. And so, but. Uh, but everybody, whenever they say train, means I'm going to enter a competition, I'm going to get a PR, I'm going to do all that. But that's not true. Let's talk about what people think they want, which is the six-pack, the, the competition when they get a PR, or like they live on PRs and stuff like that. What they actually want is people want to be decently strong, decently fit, and look good naked. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, I always have a hard, like the winning and uh, PRs, yeah. those things. I think when people, what people want when they say they want that is they want to like fucking really like and feel joy in their training. Exactly. You had a fucking lifetime period. Like, fuck it. Like, that's what that is. Yeah. Don't make that about the fucking joy. PR. Yes, exactly. That's the problem. Right. You're and enough. Yeah. You just are enough. do the thing. Right. Yeah. And so, but what they need is also something else. What I want to give people, me, with a template, and then uh, I'm also going to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll, I'll talk about it after, uh, is give them a shot at anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like 90% of people have anxiety issues. What I want to give to people is a shot at anxiety, at sleeping well at night, not fucking hating themselves all the time, not being angry, all that. You know what I mean, like yeah. that's what I want to give people. To give them that though, I understand that, I, to give them what they need, I understand that I need to give them what they want first. Mm -hmm. So what I want is I want to give people a way to get decently strong, decently fit, look good naked. Get, and if you do that, by the way, on a consistent basis, trust me, you'll, you'll get the PRs, right? But it's to get, the, it's to get the, the training as an overall, right? Yeah. What I don't want to do anymore is to get that objective mind mentality and give you something for that very specific thing. So that means that the only way I can do this if I want to get a shot at what I truly want, which is to have anxiety and everything, is give you an entire week program, like, which I believe is the yeah. proper way forward. So, that's the, so I've been testing it for a month. Uh, I'll explain it on another video if you want, but it actually follows the wheel. So it's a lot of flow work into fight, and then we get yeah. closer to the anaerobic threshold. And it is and very, very stuff. much, though, having seen it, you work on it a lot, it is very much almost exactly what you've been doing from yeah. a yeah. overreaching standpoint, an overarchy. Right. A lot of the, yeah. all the themes, is, it is really it's the way the wheel, you the have been yeah. training. Right, so, but what, what that template is, is a demonstration of the strong fit, I don't want to say system, but... Uh, as, as a whole form right there exactly. that is but the whole thing right the whole context being with it which yeah. means uh, it covers all the bases right yeah. and I it, at my talking about PR like I've been getting stronger on the, in the last four weeks well I've been getting leaner as well uh, everything is going is well going I think well. I think what I like about this approach is that what you what we've done is basically we've taken away the thing where we're going to do a weightlifting template we're going to do a powerlifting template where you're going to come in, like we said, with an objective, which is yeah. I'm going to do this work and my powerlifting numbers will improve right. or others. What you've done it's here is, is, is you've made this, which is no, no, no. Here is this That's process. The whole thing. You do this thing as a whole right. and then you will become whatever you become after this. You find out what that is. Right. And that's going to be and, you. And, then after and that yeah. we can work yeah. with a little bit more without trying to just lead somebody to some goal that they probably don't want. That I can be proud of. Because again, yeah. my goal me is to go at sleeping better, anxiety, you, uh, 
becoming a better human. Yeah. That's really what I have in mind. And I can't do that through an objective-based mentality. All I can do through that is make money. Yeah. So what I'm interested in me is pushing the, the template first as, as an overall, like, you know, as, as an overall context so that I can um, help you being you. Mm -hmm. which I think really is what we lack the most is um, that's we'll do a podcast on that subject but um, that idea that your head can tell your body what to do is I think the source of the greatest evil yeah. of all like we see it all the time like your heart your gut like those are the ones that are supposed to lead you through the day right almost like that intuition mm -hmm. stuff that it doesn't come from the head like everybody is filtered through the head now if yeah. you look at people when you know when was the last two times you followed your gut, your gut and your heart feeling is for food or training? Two forms of addiction. Yeah, that's very This is the last time you followed truly your gut because those are overwhelming feelings. But what was the last time you felt something here and followed on that without filtering it through your brain, through your, your neocortex, right? If you look at it, like when was, and ask, ask yourself truly that question. What was the last time you reacted to things in your life in a, it's not subconscious, is in a, well, I mean, in that case, it would be if we look at it in that, in that sense, but in that subconscious way of like your, your heart and your gut are leading you forward, yeah. where you make decisions based on that without going through the process of going, how do I feel about this? Well, I think that's the measure of the what, I mean, maybe not, I think that's just what instinct really is. You know what I mean? Right. Because there's a because if you have to think it through, I'm, I'm, you're not trusting your instincts. You're trusting logic, right? And you're trusting everything but your own instincts. By the way, on that on that aspect, I can give you many many studies that show that without emotions, we make we take the wrong decisions, even when it comes to logic. Yeah. As humans, we cannot make decisions without emotions. Like it's been proven in neuroscience that that's a myth that logic will you know that cold emotionless logical stuff it's a complete myth it's not true at all it's been proven that people take far better decisions far faster decisions uh through the emotional system it doesn't work like yeah. that you know why because it's hypothesis versus i also observation. think when you see people if you see some people too who cannot make those types of decisions when the emotion is, mm -hmm. is high often that is just a it's usually just a dysfunction in the way that they it is. function with the nervous system exactly. anyways because you're in freeze then you don't go to yep. emotion and action you so now you fucked up and now yep. how valuable are you when the pressure's right. on so know? can you go through your day on instinct for example can yeah. you lead your life mostly on instinct but again without going through the neocortex of what do I think about this? How do I feel about this? Like, can you do that? Because that's where well, people say, how do you do? How do I do what I do? That's actually, I live in almost a subconscious form. Mm -hmm. I, very little of what I do is based on the, that neocortex processing. Yeah. Some of it, obviously. But again, there's the balance, I think, that we all look for. Yeah. Is, and I think that's where this society is leading us astray. Is the balance of prediction versus observation, right? You're supposed to have a balance between the two. Observation comes from the body, but it's not just the body because you have to understand the brain is a hierarchy, right? And you have the neocortex, which sits on top where pure thought is. But the rest of the brain actually is part of the body in that sense. So we can't look at the brain as one thing. It has to be the body links to parts of the brain. So those parts of the brain are still... Those, those, those are their own things. The right, and they're still part of the yeah. body in that sense. Yeah. Then you have the neo So there's the hierarchy there and then the sense of self, and that's why all that stuff is so complex, right? But the thing really is most people now is the neocortex decides everything. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything without going, how do I feel about this? <coughs> like that's why people want to say live in their heads. That's why, because no, no, no decision, no, nothing can go through their body and then acting on that, they have to first go, how do I feel about this? Yeah. This is, but then that means that you are all prediction, no observation. So that means that you're gonna make a prediction and follow on it, regardless of what the world is telling you about it. That sounds like a fucking bad <laughs> idea. Now, there's a measure of control for you, right? Yeah. Like, so, but, so you're gonna keep fucking things up. You will never learn. And we talk about somatic errors being produced. You are over mentalizing everything. So what is the way out of that? How to find balance? We need, first of all, the overwhelming feeling from the body. But even from there, at some point, you're gonna to have to have the connection to the body to feel what to do. And a lot of it is in your gut, is in your heart. By the way, as a culture, we know that. Gut feelings, mm -hmm. follow your heart. Yeah. We know that already. When was the last time those two 
decided for you outside of a beautiful woman, food or training. <laughs> right? Yeah. But look yeah. at it. By the way, food and, and training, forms of addiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Because they're overwhelming. That's what the, the sympathetic fixes give you. They give you overwhelming feeling from your body. This is why I think the addiction is so powerful, because it makes you free. Because you actually fix the prediction error by finally yeah. listening to your body. The yeah, problem and then, is... And yeah, and then you've introduced essentially just chemical certainty at that moment. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but through training as well. Suddenly you can make, feel some... And so you could yeah. see how that could lead to dangerous places, right? Because then, and so the more you're stuck in your head, the more freedom you're going to get out of food and exercise. Right, but the, but the key would be, imagine if I could give you that freedom out of your day. Yeah. Out of, what should I do now? Uh, this, how many people freeze on that question? Lots. How do you feel? What do you want? How many, because maybe... The answer to those questions, Julian, is why are you asking me? That's what, yes, that's exactly. What right. Stop asking me. But maybe because the answer is not in the neocortex. Maybe this, remember, three brains, not mm -hmm. one. Right, and even that brain on top is not as simple as we make it out to be. Again, that's... Uh, functional segregation. What if the answer comes out of those two? Because that's what your sense of self is anyway. It's yeah. in your gut and your heart. What if the answer to what do you want, all that stuff, comes from that? So I guess in a Freudian way it would be the subconscious. But what if that's supposed to lead you in your day? How many of us trust our body enough to do that? If I say, trust what your body says, you're all going to eat a pot of Nutella and then, and then try to pee out on your snatch every day, mm -hmm. right? But that's, again, distrusting the body. That's saying you cannot follow what your body is telling you. Why? Right, your body knows better. If it's, again, the heart is a brain and nervous system. The gut is as well. You're a unit, right? There's a context, all that stuff. So, by the way, you can't learn if you don't trust those. But also, like, why are you being led astray? Yeah. Right? So, so me... when we get through the questions, should we, talk, we talk about how we're going to give that... Right. That feeling, that independence feeling. How how do you how do you build? Because this is what you've been experimenting with your training. How right. do you build that into how you train and eat? Right. So we of, start right? by As training. We start by training correctly first of all, okay. and I believe training correctly goes way past good technique. Mm -hmm. I believe we have to follow the wheel. You know the the phylogenetic yeah. hierarchy. So we start with flow work, assistance work, to move into a max effort movement, to move in to move into a conditioning, short conditioning and everything. Again, to get to allow you to get in touch with your with your muscles. When we say muscle building, like I think we should stop teaching a deadlift and start teaching how to use your hammies and the glutes lifting a bar from the ground. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Integration. Yeah. You know what I mean when I say that? Yeah, right. Because the deadlift has its own snapshot in people's minds already. Right. And so that again, what this looks like. and guess who wins? Snapshot. So guess who wins? Mm -hmm. The neocortex saying yeah. you're going to look like that. That's an objective aid. This is where everybody fails, right? Yeah. That's not the point. The point is hammies and glutes. Okay. But so you're going to have to find them, yeah. which it, is a problem. And if you so we need the bodybuilding part to make yeah. you actually feel those muscles. Well, plus if you remove the gym aspect from all of it and you just take a person right. out into the back and there's a box on the ground and they're going to pick it up they're not going to do what they would do when they would deadlift anyway yeah so just work with what that is right and that and, is and it. i think you are right in that like we we set that that terminology makes a big difference right. yeah and so what i want first is i want people to find muscles mm -hmm. two reasons first of all because most of you cannot Right? So we need some assistance work, some muscle building. Let's not call it bodybuilding because everybody's thinking the dude does the Olympia and steroids and all that stuff. Let's say muscle building. You need muscle building because you can't, this is a performance box we're going to talk about yeah. in a podcast soon, where you need muscle quantity and quality in order to do stuff. Right? So a lot of, if, going back to knees out, the reason your knees are, com are coming in is because you don't have the inside hammy, you don't have the internal torque structure to keep your knees from collapsing in has nothing to do with driving them out. It's actually yeah. stronger internal torque chains. We've done it a thousand times. It fixes the stuff every single time. Right, so, but that means I need to give you the inside hammies for you to deadlift correctly. Right, so isolation work will work, or like for example, lunges, yeah. right? Things like this, like I need to give you the internal torque chains muscles and the external torque chains muscles. So that means that we have to do a training that has that as a constraint. Right, if you're moving as fast as you can on a CrossFit workout, 
might not that's work. That's going to create a problem. Right. Yeah. So I need some muscle building exercises, right? Uh, on the strength level, like I need to make sure you're strong overall so we can use a conjugate system yeah. in that sense, right? Uh, conditioning, too many people pace. So what they're building is VO2, VO2 max. But by doing that, they're also lowering their VLA max. So I need to build their capacity to produce lactate. So I'm going to make them do very short, very intense work. And so it looks weird when you read it on paper, but, by, but you, when you're finishing the session, you'll know exactly what I want. And by doing that, I finished also the, the, the phylogenetic hierarchy, the will that allows you to leave the gym and be in the proper state for the rest of the day. You're going to feel awesome. And so this, that template, as simple as it looks on paper, is actually the culmination of all the stuff I've been studying yeah. forever. And one of the constraints that will be explained through podcast is that every single exercise is going to have to be painful. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what you... Stop the stuff at the gym where you're concentrating and basically not doing shit. No. Stop being a pussy at the gym. I see it... Maybe I see it all the time in the global gym, stuff like that. People that are... Because there's all functional fitness now. Yeah. So they're all showing those six sizes with the thing and that, and everybody's doing that, and no one is doing shit. Yeah. I've, I, that's why it's so, what I've been doing with my bodybuilding training and then with some of the guys I coach with their, their accessory work yep. is that's exactly that is it was when I was doing just powerlifting stuff, it was very easy for me to go in and do my main lift, my fucking bent over yep. rows or whatever, and then stand there and do some curls and some triceps and some minutes. this. Yeah, and then, exactly. Right. And then, uh, and not doing shit. Yeah. And, and so, so what I've been doing with, with my guys also is having the same deal with accessory work. It's like, it's got to hurt. So we'll set so two minutes three or one minute. Right. Three right? constraints. He has to hurt. He has to raise your blood pressure. He has to raise your temperature. Yeah. That's because of the right interior and cellar and all the stuff we're going to yeah. talk about later. Uh, so if every set should be, so when you finish, your eyes should be popping out of your sockets. You should be hot as fuck and you should be in major pain. You want to know how to do that? Do lunges on one leg for one minute straight. Yeah. You're going to have, trust me, by the third set, you're going to have to take, so take breaks, just don't take the weight off your back and take, take three breaths. That's the longest you can wait is three breaths so and then go. talk about weight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <talking> right, yeah. <laughs> and so, and trust me, like the, the next day, your ass is on fire, your hammies are sore. That's, I also, that's what I want out of the template. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, think, I want them in the right state. Yeah. That's what functional integration is about. The state. Remember state versus action? I made enough talk about this. And I think this is what I've noticed about this is, like you said, it's the culmination of everything you've been working on lately. But it's really been built upon oh, yeah. everything. from everything. So going Grappling, way, back, way back since the beginning. Man, yep. But then even up further into from all of the performance principles that we talk about with the performance box. I yep. think integrated in with torque now the nervous system the wheel me as an athlete everything tied you like it's it's kind of all just tied yeah. into this thing now, it's it's so. it's all my stuff because and this is why i feel comfortable with own because no matter what it's me yeah. like this is what i think with my constraints i've been testing it it feels really great like again i'm getting stronger bigger i'm on five i'm much leaner right now uh even though i was called fat by that lady well i even had this facebook i would say when i got here last week i was like did you get fucking bigger again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but this time while getting leaner. Though. Yeah. So the, the, and then we've been testing also that template on a few people on the mentoring program. And so far it's working really well. I, I like it because I know where it's coming from and I know where it's going and I know the context of it. And I believe this is the correct way to do it. So will it, it can it be adapted to a degree? But what I will give you is the structure of it mm -hmm. and then the template, right? Every week we'll film videos about, um, some about of it, yeah, that, some through, of it, yeah. just so they can see the movement, like especially uh, some of the high points that need clarification. That will do, but I also want some <laughs> videos film, like when I'm at a global gym, so people can see what it's like to go through a set. So instead of yeah. the pusses at the gym doing that stuff, I'm like, no, you finish a set of cable flies, and I'm fucking screaming, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ow, yeah. for like five minutes. That's what I want out of your training. So th th there's an overall, right? There's a, there's a context that I want to provide with that template. So we'll release the template. So I don't know, like 50 euros a month or whatever. Yeah. And then it'll be, it'll be the training. That we, we, we'll have training videos that, that where we explain the concept. No way it'll be out there for free for everybody, no matter what. We'll, we'll go all that stuff. Yeah. And so can it be um, customized? Yes. And that's also something I'm going to start on April 1st is... I'll take, I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching mm -hmm. for the, so for training 
where I'll uh, will customize the template for you, customize your training, see what you need, the muscles that need to be built. Like I'm guessing most of the people are gonna ask me are gonna come from an injury background or burnout background, yeah. which is really what I'm interested in. Because uh, a lot of coaches, again, they, and I understand why they don't want to say it, yeah. but totally get it. But most like out there, I know, and I know where it's coming from. I don't blame you for it. I, I got you. I mean, I, I understand. This is an extremely, I believe coaching is a very grateful job mm -hmm. compared to how much energy we put out there. If we compare the energy that we put out there, the love we put out there for people, the care we put out there versus the care and love we get back. It is an ungrateful job. Yeah. Like we've all been there where some of the clients are great and they mm -hmm. feel like family and that's why we do it. Others are less so. Yeah. Let's put it this way, yeah. right? 10% of your clients will make your life worth living. The 10, other 10% will worth. make you want to fucking die. Yeah. And the rest are pretty good people too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but that fucking bottom 10%, man. Yeah. But those ones, so you have accumulated injuries or your burnout or whatever. I see so much of that. They just don't want to say it. How many competitors in CrossFit do you see going to fitness now? You know why? Because they're broken yeah. or burnout. Like they just can't do it anymore. And and by the way, I'm I'm cool with that. I love fitness as well. Like uh, if you're training, we're good. I don't care if it's powerlifting, strongman, CrossFit, fitness. If you're training, we're cool. You just need to train. And again, I think we also need to go back. I think people need to to hear that it's okay to want to look good. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You, I, I, is that because, like, I see that a lot with CrossFitters. Is that because they all made fun of global gyms at first? Yeah, is that what so. the issue is? I so think it's drew a line there? in the sand 10 years ago. And they just, right. Yeah. But let's be honest. What we all want is to be decently strong, decently fit, yeah. and look good. I think it's actually just, it's just like like remnants of what the culture kind of was, the vibe was like. And it's just, I, I think, think so. I yeah. think it just kind of hangs around and, yeah. that's, and by the nobody way, else hears anybody saying Decently say strong yeah. is... It, it's in the eye of the beholder. Decently strong for me is an 800 pound carry, is a 600 deadlift, 500 pound squat, 400 pound bench press, uh, body weight strict press, 360 stone, uh, farmer's carry, I will go with 130 kilos per hand. You know what I mean? Like, that's decently mm -hmm. strong for me. Yeah. Right. That's, you know, uh, 5K under 21 minutes. Yeah. Right? Uh, body fat percentage around 10%. So, my. Decently strong is not necessarily you are decently strong, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, and I think mine is primarily just to be as big and jacked as possible. I'm good. That's it. Done. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, well, the, no, that is true. Like, but like my performance number is what I care about as far as my performance is almost nothing, as far as like, like weight. So meaning, well, no, not the number, yeah. only that it that it go well because you lose fifty good. pounds, your bench isn't right. going to be awesome. It feels good. Yeah. Feels good. And so for me. My, but you got to remember, I want to be really big and really jacked, which means you don't get to do that by trying to get weaker either. Meaning, meaning exactly. so, 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 right? so those Both numbers strengths. are going to be respectable because they fucking have to be yeah. to a certain point. To, to be but as I'm big and not chasing them. Yeah, uh, right. Because I'll so go in strengths. and I know my deal when I go in now and I just, I know what's because working. Because objectives have ruined you, have ruined the health, your health. And yeah, yeah, I went no. very fast on objectives. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> no, but like me, like for yeah. example, what? The gym was never about muscles for me. Yeah. It was always all numbers. It was always about my head. It was trying to get stronger in my head, childhood stuff and everything, to not be weak. Mm -hmm. that, that's me, why I stepped into a gym. That's why I did strongman. That's why I did MMA, that's grappling, all that stuff. I just did not, do not want to be weak. Yeah. I spent probably two years with, for that, it was just a proof to myself that yeah. I could take care of myself even, you know, where yeah. coming in off the totally street get that. and it's like, all right, I, I totally gotta get that. eat a little better. And, and that, but then after that, when I realized it worked, I was like, well, maybe I can do more. Well, this is what I want. But you know what? I, well, yeah. But what me, where I got fucked up is the second the gym became about numbers. Yeah. Strongman, Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. It became about championship. It became about winning. I always the said I would, I would have, I would have probably had, had bigger numbers in the long run if I was generally a smaller person. What I ran into all the time was every gym I'd go into, I was the biggest fucking dude there already. You know, that's you know? and, how, I was, that's and I was like, I, I was like, I can't be doing a deload week here. Right, but you These know, like, people are going to think I only I quit, squat 500 pounds. This is why I quit jiu-jitsu, because I'm big yeah. for jiu-jitsu. You know, uh, and I was good. And so every time he's like, are you going to compete? Are you going to do this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. And so now, and the art just went out the window. And so you need to go to the gym for you. And, but you need to be told that whatever your goals are, yeah. it's okay. 
So you, you're going to offer some one-on-one -on -one spots. Right, too. right. We're so going to do that. We'll run that through juliansconer.com or we'll have it probably. also. Probably. I'll also have it on our Instagram. I'll have so it, a link to this will be on our Instagram stuff. I'll take stuff, both 10 people for the training. Yeah. And I'll take 10 people for nutrition. Right. So I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so I want to help you with your training, but I also like the nutrition a lot. Like this yeah. is something like I've seen so much results from the protocol. Yeah, it has made me very happy. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like like I feel like I'm helping. Yeah. Like I feel like actually what I do has meaning. Yeah. So nutrition. So, but I also realized like by doing the the group, which I still think communal intelligence is the right way forward. A lot of people do not want to talk about their stuff in a group situation. I found that we. I found that we. <sighs> It's not working mm -hmm. always, yeah. right? So that that's a, it's not a shame. Well, yeah, it is a shame. That it is it's a not shame. It's the nature. Because I do you, exactly. Yeah. I do believe in a tribal system. It would work better, but it's not. At least not yet. Maybe we haven't found a proper way to do it. Or maybe people need to get their the first bit of unpacking done. Maybe and whatever that, it is. You know. So I will offer one on one nutrition as well. What we can do is nutrition and training combined. Yeah. So I'll do one on one. I'll, I'll do. I won't. It won't be the prices on the journalist corner. I'll do it because I want to. I want to see what I can do. So I'll use the we'll industries. Set up, we'll set up another link. And yeah, that. but it'll be like, so people know, like the industry standards will be on like 400 a month for yeah. the, the training. I'll do like something like 200 for the nutrition, yeah. like the old prices, you know, something yeah. like that. And then if you combine the two, we'll find a deal or some shit like that, 500 yeah. a month. So. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I want to, I'll take 10 of each. Okay. 10, 10 training, 10 nutrition. And... Um, and so, so I can, I can, because I feel like this I would do well, because it's my constraints. Uh, and I do. I, I'm starting to understand things in life better, like by being outside my cave. Is that in order to get people what what they need, I need to first give them what they want. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast with Tony Robbins uh, the other day. And he was with, um, what's that British actor I was telling you about? Like the, oh, that was uh, the one with Russell Brand. Russell podcast. Brand, right, right, right. Yeah. And he was a great podcast because um, he does what he does. Like, uh, it's mm -hmm. not my thing. Even though you have to admire the guy's energy. What, that dude is on. What Tony Robbins does is a lot of fucking things. It is crazy. Where is that guy getting the energy? Like, I don't it's know. insane. I wouldn't do it. I, 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 honest to God, there's a, here's the real difference between me and Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins will sell 50,000 seats. That's not that. What are they like? 10,000 yeah. seats at $5,000 each yeah. or something like something fucking crazy. Yeah. Right. And, and he'll do that like fucking every other weekend forever. And then plus some week long things. But too. he's talking about, yeah. I would do two of those a year and I'd never fucking work again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but listening That's... to him in the podcast, me, I get the feel like he cares that much. Absolutely. He does four days or 12 hour days. Yeah. I can't do that. Like, I, I can't even do the coach's week without no. being too drained. No. It's insane. You barely survived some seminars. <laughs> no, seminars I'm better on that. But uh, it took me three years. But uh, I can't survive coaches They're less week, frequent like, now, true. Is, yeah, is the other yeah that's too. true. Yeah, Not yeah. this frame, I need, I need yeah. the I need the recovery, man. Yeah. Like, the, what he can do. I, anyway. Past that, I was very impressed at that, that constant energy that he has. Like, again, it's not my but, way of doing things. Yeah, but, but his uh, thing was that you need to... You need to give people what they want a little bit in the beginning before you can even give have them access what they need. to them. Yeah, at the yeah. End. and then, and that's something I hear a lot. Um, there's a lot of people right there that you can feel really care. Mm -hmm. Thank God for podcasts and stuff like that because they get to do it their way. Yeah. But I think this is a recurrent thing that I've heard enough that I have to realize that it was mostly my ego getting in the way mm -hmm. on this, going like, well, you're going to fucking do it my way. It's like, no, I need to give you guys what you truly want before I can give you what I think you need, right? Yeah. And so they, and, but I don't see any problem with that either. It's just, my problem was the five kilo on the snatch. I was like, but that's not what you, what, that's not what you want. God that's it. not it's what never you want because, you want. exactly, because when we actually said, you know what, I'll give that to you. This is what you have to do. And they never do it. Mm -hmm. It shows you that's not what they want. What they want is again, it's decently strong, fit, and look good. I just think we need to be, because we're in a position of podcast where we can do it, to tell people, that's okay. Yeah. Like, I want that. Yeah. 
I just want to look I want good. to look good. That's why I took a picture of my abs this morning and put it on Instagram because yeah. I'm like, hey, I got abs. Might as well get the shot there, now. There's two rules I follow by fully. The first one is fucking never, ever, ever waste good lighting. And the second I one agree is, with that. is try to find good lighting as often as possible. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like at that gym, if we had that, where we, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we're going to change the light so we look we'll good. Uh, yeah, we'll be possible. top lit, exactly. soft. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, we'll do four shirtless podcasts a year. It'll be great. The, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that yeah and i think it's actually hurting a lot of people because then they they don't want to say it out loud so then they come up with those weird like prs on lift that they don't really care have, about so they don't do the work so having been bad. having been a person who is overweight for a fair amount of time i think a lot of that can come from people don't want to admit that they want to look good or look better because then they have to feel like they admit to themselves that they're not good enough right now you know what I mean? That I don't like how I look but, right now. Yeah, but that's you know? the key. Is that idea that good enough and looking good yeah. are, are related. Yeah. They are not related. Like it's, they're not related. And if you don't feel good about yourself, like we'll have podcasts about the sense of self. Trust me, it's because the signals coming from your body are not good. It has nothing to do with your neocortex, with your thought pattern. It's because your body feels like shit. Mm -hmm. And the reason it feels like shit is because you're not moving correctly. You're not moving the way you should, you're not eating correctly. Well, that's what yeah. really gives you a sense of, you know, like net worth that isn't good. But so I don't think getting the six pack will give you that sense of being, uh, feeling good. I think what will give you the sense of feeling good is being healthy. Yeah. So, but if I can True, make you chase- feeling chest, good walking around. Exactly. <laughs> but if I can make, give you that pack, make you chase the six pack, then fuck it, let's do it. Mm -hmm. But the problem before is I didn't have the weapons to do that. So now I know, I can even tell you, I'm going to ma manipulate you by with a six pack and getting strong and the PRs and everything into being a better human being, into giving you less anxiety, better sleep and feeling better when you walk around and maybe going around trusting your heart and your gut instead of processing everything through your thoughts all the time. Yeah. That's what I want to give you. And so I'll do it by making you stronger, fitter and looking better. Yeah. So the template we're going to offer... This is this is how uh, what's the word I want to use here? How fast we are to implement? It's the best term, not disorganized or unprepared. No, because uh, uh, you didn't know about it. Is well, I did, it? but we, we timeline uh, this morning with yeah. the with the template. Do we want to just have people go to? Uh, you want me to just make a landing page? People can yep. drop an email. So I'll have a link in the bottom on everything. If you're watching on iTunes, it'll, listen on iTunes. It'll be there on YouTube. It'll be there too for the for the template thing. It'll be a sign up. That thing will roll out. It'll be functional probably pretty soon here. Yeah, but, um, but it'll I be. I might call it functional integration. Template. Functional integration. I like that because I like it. Yeah. Functional integration template you know, fit, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Fit, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I want to see how. By the way, I want to see how long it takes before you see a lot of the term functional specialization or the, yeah. and functional uh, integration out there in the fitness world. Because I'm starting to notice a few trends <laughs> here and there on shit coming out. There's a, a lot of things that sound pretty, yeah, pretty familiar. Yeah, they sound familiar. So <coughs> you're going to hear functional integration yeah. being thrown out without having a fucking clue of what it means. I've got some Left friends. Right. I'm going to have to start uh, just having all those uh, IP addresses comb through. So I figure out... I want this, there'll be some names that I'm going to catch things, there. And but. by the way, the reason we do it uh, for free on this is that everybody has the content. Yeah. The only thing we ask is the credit. Give credit where credit is due. Yeah. If you just, I got it from the strong fit guys, we're cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't make it pass like it's your shit. No, that's the difference. That's the big I, difference. I, I, like functional integration stuff, I got it out of Carl Friston. Mm -hmm. I put the link of his lecture, of his lecture where he talks a little bit yeah. about it. Plus, like this isn't. IP By the way, theft. I gave the good lecture, the one that you guys can actually understand, not the hard one. Yeah. I gave the, the easy one. I make the effort. I go. I get the it. hard ones, and then six weeks later, he sends me the easy ones. But the last one was it? The last one's great. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. That dude. That dude is a. That that dude brings me joy. So we just have to go to London and do that. Oh fuck yeah! I'll bring a camera. I, I just want a selfie <laughs> with it. Like that dude brings me joy. Like uh, I know people have. They look at. Sunshines and unicorns and rainbows Zillian and puppies. Carl Friston in the morning. Oh, you know what? <laughs> do you know what I do? It's my afternoon when I go like to work on my stuff and your science. Yeah. And then um, I couldn't read that well that day for whatever reason. So I was, and I they, there was a hard video that I was watching. Fun, not, not for me, but because I know the the background. But then uh, I stumbled upon that one, and it was. 
but he was oh, like I was almost crying watching it because he was so fucking smart. Yeah. The level of that, the level of that guy's mind yeah. is the most gorgeous thing I've seen. And I also think that for you, there is the amount of time and work and effort you've put into putting the pieces together that you have. And then what his, what everything that he talks about seems to tie all that up so well, Validate. but also yeah. builds upon it in a way that allows yeah. you to learn more and take it further. Yeah. So it's but not just like someone come in and going, yeah. Hey buddy, you're right. It's like, Hey, you are right. Now we got a long fucking ways to and, go. And so, and, yeah. And it's like this because there's a, universe and you know what it does for me the most also is that idea that the body is not that deprecated thing like i don't know maybe it's just a question it's not culture. shitty thing, that, this shitty thing that, and, yeah, yeah but that's you know i think therefore i am like all that stuff where the body is really that thing that the mind orders mm -hmm. right that seems to be i mean maybe it's because i grew up in a very catholic culture which is france right uh but the I always felt like we were insulting a beautiful thing with that idea that the body is, again, that dirty thing that the yeah. mind orders around, almost like a necessary evil, right? You see that when people talk about sex, when they talk about, you know, feelings or stuff like that. The, the body is the thing we order yeah. and then really the purity is within the neocortex. And I'm like, I don't think that's how it that's works. How it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> and I think this is what that, you know, that flow in neuroscience has given me, like the beauty f of it for me is that, no, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unit, right? There's an integration of all that stuff together that forms the beautiful system. But the beautiful system is not the soul. The soul is the entire body. Yeah. It's that connection between the two. And it's, so he, every time I hear him speak, and the, again, the beauty of his mind is something that just calls to me every time. And in that 20-minute that talk, he went through probably 12 neuroscience books, uh, 13 mind-blowing ideas. Reasonably without, <laughs> And <laughs> like he's surfing. And by the way, he stumbles, he comes right back to the world. Watch out. You could not memorize the fucking <laughs> world he's using. Yeah. And he's just going through it like, this is how the guy talks <laughs> at a fucking plus 967 yeah. when we all at 36. You in, know a, I mean? in a room full of brilliant people going, Oh, shit, slow down. Right, everybody's right. like, what? There what? are... What? <laughs> and that, but that's why there's a fan club of people that don't understand Carl Fuston. No, it's my favorite. There's, I think there's a whole Twitter page about it. I'll find it. I'll put it in the thing. Oh, it and is. <laughs> but you know what? Because every time I'm like, but he's referring to... Wait, wait, wait. That's psychotherapy. I know that one. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into... That's quantum mechanics. Yeah. And then he goes into pure mathematics. And then I get lost on that one. But... Just, I know at least what he's referring to. He's referring, anytime he talks about neuroscience, he's referring to people from physics, mathematicians, pure biology stuff. I was like, I know who he's talking. What the fuck is that coming yeah. here? And so he's, talk about functional integration, he's taking all the basically human sciences and putting them into a mind-blowing idea and he just runs through like 12 of them in, in per minute almost and you go, what <laughs> the fuck just happened? Now, what's funny is, you do that a lot <laughs> also guess, but yeah. so the, the remember so last week's episode by the way this is the first time you guys are hearing up an episode that is like fucking within 24 48 hours of we're almost real time now this episode's coming out in like two oh yeah right that's true. Yeah, 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 it's world's real time yeah. so that's why i'm asking you about how we're going to release this i gotta make yeah. those things exist <laughs> tonight. yeah because you're fucking two days <laughs> yeah but uh but you do that a lot it's just like the last episode we talked about brain networks you had yeah started going and I, and I was like you just i know where you're gonna go which is everywhere but let's stay we yeah. just got to spend more time because and I've, i got a lot of messages in the last week from people who were like like dude this last episode was great it was yeah. awesome and they also said they already had to go back and listen to uh, i had three or four different people who messaged me to tell me that they as soon as they finished not because they didn't understand it because they needed to like clarify their notes yeah. to go back and run notes immediately upon finishing it. So you do that too. You run you run pretty far and wild. It's pretty concise to where Actually, that one was, you just have to get it all scratched in behind you though. because there is a lot for people to But that to one was the uh, that one was the easy version. That was the easy version. That's like, why I, I liked simplified it. <laughs> That's why I tried, tried I to make it the yeah, easy that, version. That's why that one I simplified as much yeah. as I could. And and we'll be building on that one sometime be too much but quite yeah. a bit in the future. Um, the, yeah, do we want to do for the the one to one thing? I don't know if there's any reason we can't just make that be an application thing, and they can. I'll set up a thing for that too. 
Yeah, yeah, because we'll see how many soon. people ask. Because I, yeah. I'm not gonna do uh, 35 of them. No, no, no. Like, like we can I, cap I, it. We'll figure. But there will be a link for you for Julian's one to one. Yeah, because and for the template. this is why, by the way, I, I was charging so much on my website because I don't want to do this. Yeah. But because I wasn't feeling good about it, in this with a new template and the, the training I've been doing lately, because I'm over a month in, in it now, every single time I get I finish the session going like, yeah, yeah. that was correct. So. I'm, I'm very comfortable with, the, with that format and yeah. I want to push it out there more because I believe this, I, my goal is getting clearer now to mm-hmm. what I want for people. And yeah. so I want to start pushing that stuff. So I know I can take two hours in the morning and answer everybody. So now if I have 10 people training, 10 people in nutrition, I can do that in my two hours in the morning mm-hmm. and just, you know, and, and help people move forward. So that's why also I'm going to keep the the prices in the range that people can pay yeah. so just industry like the, yeah julian uh, talked me down on the prices so we're yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well like just to stay like i was honestly i looked at invictus and it was yeah. like 379 dollars a month so i was like well it's 350 euros i'm like fine i'll do that yeah, yeah. uh average on for nutrition is like 150 to 200 i was like fine i'll do 200 euros there you go well and that's the thing is once you get into a, like a you're teaching the thing you want to teach to the people yeah. you want to teach for the reasons you want to do it and same reason I came up with uh, the stuff I was doing with uh, my guy Garrett from up in Canada. Yeah. Like, we set it up and I was like, I'll coach you for free. Yeah. Because I want to try like to do it. I feel like right. you'll do it. I like you. I need someone to try it. He does the thing for six weeks and we do it for 12 weeks and I'm still talking yeah, to him every month. There, and there it's, dude, it's not a thing. But, yeah, but that'll like, be the same Once you're yeah, doing if, it like that. If yeah. I don't feel like you. Let's set up a constraint on that, by the yeah. way. We spend a lot of time uh, giving stuff for people for free. Right. Yeah. If you cannot take the time to uh, do some of the work on your own, like yeah, like then you're not one of my people. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like I have, like, I release uh, studies and stuff like that. People don't even read them. They go like, I just want to start a conversation. I'm like, you start a conversation after reading the study. Yeah. Not saying what about this. By the way, especially to, to contradict the point I was making. Because yeah. now what you want is you want to talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. I, don't, I do not take monkey throwing feces at me nicely. No. <laughs> now, I mean, if you're in there just to talk about yourself, to not do the work, to go, oh, yeah, well, what about me? Right. So if you think the template is like, well, I want to do it this way or whatever, I'm like, that's fine. But one-on-one coaching will, will be that. It's like, you're going to have to do the work. Yeah. Like, I want committed people. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, otherwise, what are we doing this for? Exactly. So we're going to have all that set up. I'll have it yeah. all set up for you. Uh, just check the links in where you're watching this first, and I'll get the rest out on Instagram in our link tree stuff there yeah. too. Uh, let's roll out for today. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. By the way, did we give Megan a key? Yes. Oh, you're Come good. On. You're a good man. Okay. Come My on. wife's out wandering the streets of Amsterdam, looking at a couple apartments without me, and I kind of thought she'd just be sitting out front now. No, I was nice. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so anyway, but thanks a lot for listening, everybody. Um, if you want to support the podcast, with you, you use any number of these programs Thank you that for we doing offer. So, by the way. Yeah, any number of these programs. If you buy a service, we fucking appreciate that absolutely. But we also offer the podcast support page, which is still my favorite thing. When my phone goes off, goes ding. We have a subscriber. Yeah. I fucking love it because it like You're breaks. Five bucks, it yeah. just breaks capitalism. It's my favorite yeah. thing in the world. Yes. Yes. I just made the thing and we give it away and you just I fucking love it so rule number one right never will give content for free yeah, yeah fuck it I don't know and I and both both of the with this and what we I did before for the podcast stuff is we just always always insisted on giving it away and just trusted that everything yep. would work out in the end and so far so good so far so good so uh, podcast.strongfit.com that's where you can find the podcast support page also while you're there there is a link where you can submit questions for our Q&A episodes um, and we'll get to those. Um, I also appreciate it. But we got lots of really good feedback through that form, too. Um, I don't even know if I've sent you those yet. All the, I, I sneak, snuck in a little question. Like, tell me what you like about the podcast. <laughs> just, just for me. There was a, <laughs> Actually, there was two that were really cool. Where you ask uh, two of those questions on Instagram and the responses were... Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Like what has Strongfield brought to you, I think, or something yeah. in your yeah. life? I have all like of those saved Man, somewhere too. It was, yeah. Those were good. Yeah. Those are the things that, that makes me happy. Yeah. When I read that, I'm like, man, we're doing good. Yeah, there are, th- that is a thing too. So, so those measures of showing appreciation by supporting the podcast, buying a thing, or just telling us how it's gone for yeah. you. you know, we do, it, that's, that is extremely valuable to yeah, us. Yeah, n- so. not if it's too so pieces. Don't throw shit at us. No, no throw shit. No. Like if it's just to talk, like that's what I don't like about Instagram is people that comment 
just to say I exist. I'm like, yeah. yes, you exist and I love you. You're part of the human race. Now, yeah. go exist on your own page. Yes. <laughs> what I want is people that elevate the conversation. If you have something to say of interest, I will always listen. Yeah. But if it's just to say, well, I just want to talk about me, without context, mm -hmm. right? Then it's segregation and I'm not interested. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I see too much of that. Yeah. Like I had that dude on, on YouTube today saying I'm a Viking, therefore I can only do, eat carnivore. Like first of all, Viking ate fish mostly. Yeah. Uh, and we all omnivores and you're no different than everybody else. <laughs> now that's not to say that the, the carnivore diet did not help him. Mm -hmm. but like my point wasn't that. My point was we need to the understand why. Yeah. Yeah. Why is the carnivore diet helping you? Because if we can figure that, we can help others. Yeah. Or also that that thing plus a few other components dropped into there might make it more awesome. Exactly. If you're so fucking right. stubborn with the one thing that's right. working. The key is to get the principles yeah. out of it so we can, so maybe we could, yeah, we could make it better. Yeah. So speaking of principles, I'm not going to segue using that term at all. We're just going to go right to strongfit.com. Yeah, exactly. Strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu, strongfit1 on Instagram, Tyler F. and Stone on Instagram, Rare Barracuda on Instagram. And we have more podcasts coming soon. We have lots, week, lots more podcasts coming soon. I am, guys, I am fighting Julian. I'm trying to pump the brakes for four more weeks to get some big project out for you guys oh, what? You that I'm not going to announce oh, yet before we go to All right, But you have to, you have to agree to come like every two or three days. So we on the roll. That's the point. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we don't lose the, no, no. we okay. will still be filming as though we're filming okay, two good, podcasts good, a week, good. but we'll be filming the other thing. So blame Tyler, not yeah. me. The, and also the other thing, film it. It's not like a weird porn thing. Yeah, so exactly. A... <laughs> we're filming, yeah. we're recording. So, but well, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And we will see you next week. Where you go? All right. Bye.